Hello and welcome to this week's uh, edition of Market Focus Fundamentals. Uh, and this is on 7th of November. So, uh, yet another really uh, up and down week as regards fundamentals uh, in the markets. And obviously, quite obviously, it's having a profound effect on the way these markets are behaving. And the sheer volatility really is shown in, in the types of decisions being made by country leaders and, uh, uh, well, economists around the world. Uh, Mr. Papando, obviously, at a case in point, um, he's changing his mind more times than, than not, let's just say. And it's having a, an unsettled effect on the markets. And it's uncertainty in what's happening in the Eurozone that is quite literally causing this type of uh, up and down uh, volatility. And, you know, you can look at all the charts in the world. You can look at the technical picture. Ultimately, fundamentally, this market has been driven uh, by what's happening in Europe and, you know, and how the market really perceives it. We've, we've got to have some sort of stability and the uncertainty is what is driving and making trading conditions uh, very, very difficult. But, I mean, let's just have a look at what's really been going on uh, since we spoke last. Obviously, with the referendum that was on, that was now, and that is actually now off, um, the market really has um, come back on itself uh, since uh, Friday's uh, reversal, really, if you like. And uh, at the minute, uh, the leaders of uh, Greece's two largest political parties last night decided to form a, a government of national unity to start implementing the £130 billion uh, bailout plan, which is finally, hopefully, uh, it is hopefully something that could uh, create a bit of stability in uh, that area and in within the markets. So George Papandreou, the Premier, reached a deal with uh, Antonio Samaras, leader of the opposition uh, Conservatives, uh, last night. And hopefully uh, now Mr Papandreou will step down as Prime Minister, open the way for a non-political personality with hopefully a stronger economic background to serve as the interim uh, Premier. Um, the two leaders now are really, um, up until now, have failed to agree, uh, f um, reach an agreement for a, stu a suitable candidate. And the front runners are obviously Lucas Papandomus, a former vice president of the uh, European Central Bank, and Stavros Dimi, uh, a former union commissioner who worked at the World Bank. Whoever they decide, obviously, this money, this 130 billion bailout needs to be put in place and stability in the area needs to really be more clear for the markets to be moving in any sort of direction. So um, hopefully that's some, somewhat coming to a head. And, you know, it, it, it is really a changing story on an everyday basis. So, you know... If, hey, there might be a few more twists and turns as we go into the week. So, you know, obviously keep an eye out and uh, an ear out for uh, the news that's coming out of there. Uh, on top of that, obviously, the other issues and the other problems that are ensuing, and it's all coming out of the Eurozone, unfortunately. Italy's becoming a bit of a concern now. Um, obviously, Berlusconi now is really fighting to uh, stave off uh, uh, a revolt within his own party. He's been asked to resign, and that's really, obviously, that's causing issues now in the economy uh, in terms of Italy. And uh, the intense uh, pressure now uh, and the structural uh, reforms are there to cut um, uh, the 1.9 billion euro de public debt that Italy currently has. So, um, the infighting within Berlusconi's government is not helping matters. And obviously, there are always going to be rumours as regarding Italy as uh, being one of the, the pig currency um, countries within the region that are certainly uh, have been downgraded in recent months. So more news to be certainly coming out of Italy. And um, so, again, you know, uncertainty of what's happening in these countries and and the whereabouts of what's happening is going to be a cause for concern i've just really uh before i go on to the economic calendar just like to really touch upon uh the the big news that was last week and the and the downfall and the 
and the filing of Chapter 11 of uh, MF Global. Uh, it was one of the largest, if not the biggest, uh, brokerage houses in the U.S., and it was a concern, and it has been a concern since, because very much like uh, any big organization falling, uh, the, the repercussions of other companies that were doing a lot of business and clearing through Man Group are going to be uh, coming up really going forward. So though it was a bit of a shock what happened to uh, MF Global, uh, going forward, there, there still might be repercussions of uh, of the fallout, and obviously there's a lot of uh, private investors that are unfortunately ha -ha, have had a, a bit of a shortfall with the with the funds that they've had with the MF Global. So um, another story really to be uh, keeping your eye out for. As regards going forward, what's happening this week? Um, there's going to be a raft of uh, trade. Uh, balance data. Hopefully this will uh, offer some relative strengths. If I just go into uh, the Forex calendar uh, for several leading economies in this this week. So uh, as the Eurozone uh, continues to grapple with its uh, debt crisis, Germany's trade balance for September will be closely watched on Tuesday. It is expected to remain relatively stable at a seasonal adjusted 12 billion euros, close to its average reading by the year so far, but down from 13.8, uh, which is seen in uh, August. And UK's trade balance for September, which is actually due out on Wednesday, um, is expected to widen marginally to 2.1 billion from 1.9 as exports uh, really continue to slow. So keep an eye out on that as well. Um, Back to the Eurozone, German industrial production for September is due out today, Monday, guys, for those of you who are watching this. Uh, and it's expected to show a 0.5% uh, growth from month to month, uh, and it's part due to the impact of seasonal factors during uh, August, and that will be enough to take out the quarterly growth of 3%. Uh, and just uh, following on from today, Tuesday, the UK industrial uh, production figures are expected to track purchases, uh, uh, manager surveys uh, of the period into uh, positive territory. That's rising, seen rising from uh, about 0.1% month on month. Um, obviously this week, uh, the Bank of England is not really expected to make any changes to its monetary policy on Thursday after extending its uh, quantitative easing stimulus by $75 billion, uh, in its previous uh, meeting uh, uh, a week or so ago. So, um, in terms of um, in the U.S., it's pretty light. You've got a bit of U.S. data, but key thing on Friday, just to make, uh, make note, there is Veterans Day on Friday, so it's going to be a fairly quiet and tame day uh, trading to the end of the week but as with anything you know the sort of um uh, noises that are coming out of europe i wouldn't put past uh, friday being too quiet so keep an eye out and an ear out to what's happening out there and i'll bid you uh, good weeks trading and uh, i'll speak to you and uh, you can hear from me next week again bye bye